I'd like to pose a question. Let's say you had one battery with 100 units of power, and then another battery with 100 units of power. If you were to transfer the power from one battery to the other, would you be left with 200 units of power, or would you have less? Let's find out. What is up guys, my name is Andrew and welcome to Space Busters, the series in Space Engineers where we put things to the test to find out what is true and what is not. And in this episode, we're going to be testing the limits of power uh, transfer in Space Engineers. So a couple of weeks back, someone in my Discord mentioned something about power loss when transferring from one battery to another. And at first I thought, that's, that's not a thing, right? Space Engineers is one-to-one -one in pretty much everything, so how could power loss be a thing? And how could I not know about it if it was? Well, that sparked a little bit of a discussion, and then another user in my Discord named PhD Composer actually went in and tested the transfer from one battery to another, and he came back with some results that startled me quite a bit. The results that PhD Composer came back with were that batteries are not one-to-one -one when you transfer from one to the other. In fact, there is a pretty significant power loss when you do so. Uh, so what we're going to be doing in this episode is we're going to be testing the limits of that power loss. We're going to be replicating uh, PhD composers experiments and seeing if we get the same results or if we get different results and we're gonna be trying a couple more experiments as well to find out how exactly the power loss works in Space Engineers. So what you see before us right here is our little testing range and in fact we have duplicates over here which uh, did not actually paste in very well. You can see some of them fell down but it's fine. It, it'll still work for how we want it. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to record the power from this large battery right here. We're going to record the existing power which is uh, 900 kilowatt hours and then we're going to record the existing power of the other battery which is 900 kilowatt hours and then we're going to transfer this battery to this battery and see how much of that actually gets through. We would expect there to be about 1800 kilowatt hours, right? Because 900 plus 900 is 1800. But in fact, uh, according to PhD composers experiments and according to the person who originally uh, said that there was power loss, we're going to get a number less than 1800. But how much less is the question. So the reason we have so many here is because I also want to test the, uh, the the transfer from one battery type to another. So while we have a large to large, we also have a large to small, we have a large to mini, then we have a small to large, a, a small to small, a small to mini, a mini to large, a mini to small, and a mini to mini. So we're going to test all of these three times each with, uh, with that stuff over there, and we're going to record our results, and then we will have a little bit of a discussion to find out what those results mean. I also have a couple of other experiments we'll try out uh, after this one. This is just the kind of baseline thing where we can determine how exactly the power loss works. Okay, without further ado, let's get right into the experiment. So this is the spreadsheet that we're going to be using for this. What we're recording is the battery start uh, powers. We're recording the final power, which is after everything's transferred, how much power is left over. We're recording the transfer time, and then we're deriving some data, which is the uh, the expected amount of power that we should have, the amount of, of loss that we ended up having, the uh, percentage of loss, the loss per second, the uh, percentage loss per second, the average loss, and of course the average loss per second. So I think once we have all this data, it's gonna give us a much clearer picture of how the, the uh, battery transfer works in Space Engineers. Let's just throw them all into, uh, into transfer mode and see what happens. So for this, it's pretty simple. We're gonna go battery A on, uh, charge mode, discharge, battery B on, charge mode, recharge, just like that. And we're gonna let it kind of just, uh, just go and do its own thing. So you see, it's already it's already going there. It's only gonna only gonna take about four minutes, but we'll be able to calculate that time um, pretty precisely just with the uh, the max output versus how much power we had stored. All right, let's get the other ones up and running and see. Uh, we'll see what happens, I guess. Oh, look at these nice blues. I mean, these ones are already kind of running out already. Uh, yeah, that one actually seemed to have run out. Oh, actually, you know what I did? Um, so I actually decreased the amount of power in these. So usually these start with 900 power. I actually used up until they were at, uh, well in this case this was at 43 kilowatt hours of power instead of the 900 uh, because it won't fit in this battery um, which would have ruined everything pretty much so I actually discharged down to an amount that could fit in there I did that with this one as well uh, so that the 300 in there plus the, uh, what was it, 648.59 in here would fit and then I did that with uh, this one as well so these three had uh, less amount of power when they started but I recorded that, so it should be all good. All right, let's uh, let's let these continue to go, and once they're all red, we'll come back and check on the uh, on the stuff. Looks like all the the uh, smaller ones are already red, so the smaller ones are done. Um, I guess we'll you know let's just start with the small ones. How about that? 
All right, so what we'll do here is we'll go in here and check on small battery B and we'll record the final stored power. So in this case, the final stored power is four, wait, hang on. Is that right? Oh yeah, the, okay, so the final stored power here is 4.43 kilowatt hours. Uh, now at the start, they both had 2.5 uh, kilowatt hours. So we would expect to see uh, five kilowatt hours total, but instead we only see 4.43. So there's definitely a transfer um, uh, loss uh, when you transfer from battery to battery. There's definitely a loss there. It's not one to one. So I guess that's already busted right there. Um, <laughs> so that's good to know. That's actually something I didn't know um, for my entire time playing Space Engineers until very recently. And I've been playing it for a couple of years now. I didn't know that batteries transferred uh, not one to one. But I, I guess that's good to know. So 4.43, we'll, we'll record that and then we'll uh, move on to the next one. Wow, this is actually pretty crazy. So we expected to see five kilowatt hours here and we only see 4.43. So that means the amount of loss that we experienced was 0.57 kilowatt hours. Uh, and that's 0.57 of the 2.5 that was transferred, which means we lost a whole 22% or 22.8% if we're precise of our power. That is pretty crazy. That's almost a fourth of our power. Um, Let's keep going and see how the other percentages stack up. So in the mini to small, we expected to see 302.5 since we started with uh, 2.5 and 300 uh, kilowatt hours and we transferred 2.5 into the 300. So we expected to see 302.5. Uh, instead, we see 302. So that's actually not much power loss, but I mean, it's still 20% of the power that we transferred. Um, so yeah, what I really should have done and I, I should have thought of this earlier, but I really should have had these batteries be completely empty and then transfer from there to the empty battery. But I didn't think of it. That would have uh, made things a little more clear, but uh, let's let's keep going. Okay, after checking the power of battery Bs for all of the different ones and all of the different test groups, we actually have a consensus. Uh, and it turns out I don't need to record the, uh, the, the, the transfer over time because it's not important. It turns out that the percentage loss is almost always 20% for everything. Uh, so battery one start, we lost about that much. That's 20% of what we transferred. Uh, for this one, 20.05 is about 20. Uh, for, for some of these, we had a couple of different results that were like a little bit more, or a little bit less than 20, but it's mostly 20 uh, here as well. Um, the only one where it's like uh, decisively not 20 is when it's like these ones involving the mini batteries where it's 22.8 which is a little odd, but uh, maybe that's a result of the smaller numbers uh, because they're only transferring so much power. But essentially the average loss is always around 20%. So that's actually much easier than I thought. Now when PhD from my Discord originally did his tests, he came back with these numbers here. Uh, and I was interested because the loss percentage doesn't show any clear consensus. Definitely not like mine does, uh, but I think I figured out what's happened here. So. Uh, and, and I actually made this mistake as well originally when I when I first did it. But what's happened here is that the uh, the loss here is loss from the transfer power, and he's recording the actual total power. So even though it's like 900 and 900 goes to 1,800, 1, um, this loss is only on the 900 that was transferred. It's not on the full 1,800. So if we take that into account, he's going to end up getting the the 20 for all of these. And when we account for that in his numbers, this is what we get. I don't actually know the exact numbers, but we do get the 20, uh, roughly 20, roughly 20, roughly 20, <laughs> 399. Um, but this one's probably because he didn't use the uh, 900, the full 900 from the large. So I don't know exactly how, like what the actual numbers were that were there, but that's essentially how it goes. So 20% is the percent to look out for uh, when you're transferring from battery to battery. So keep that in mind in the future, 20%. Now we're gonna do a couple more tests as well, just to test some kind of outlier cases. Like for instance, what if you're transferring from one battery to like five batteries? Or what if you're transferring over a connector or some situations like that. But if all you wanted to know was the, uh, the power loss when you're transferring battery to battery, it's 20%. Um, all right, let's get on to the other tests. Okay, so after testing the normal cases with the different battery types, I wanted to test a couple of uh, weirder cases uh, when it comes to a couple of other factors. So uh, in real life, when you transfer power, um, one of the biggest factors is actually distance. And so I wanted to put that to the test. We have one battery here, which is gonna be our battery A that is discharging. And then all the way down here in our other corner, we have battery B. So there, there's a very large distance. They're on the same grid. So I'm really not expecting them to be any different than the normal battery test, but uh, we had to test it because, um, because distance is a key thing in real life. Um, 
Another one of the tests that I have here is a connector test. So we have one battery here, and then we have a connector connecting two grids, uh, and then more grid, and then another connector right here connecting those grids, another connector here connecting those, another connector here connecting those, and a connector right there connecting those that doesn't do anything. Now, interestingly enough, I actually found a crash um, with the new update, and Space Engineers actually just updated with the heavy industry thing, and in that update, they changed how connectors work. Uh, so I think this crash is probably related to that, but check this out. If I save real quick, if I delete this one block right here, the game will crash. All I have to delete is this block. Ready? Three, two, one. Well, that looks stupid. What about this one? What? Okay, no, for real though. If I use this earlier save uh, and I delete this block right here, the game crashes. But anyways, crashing aside, I think we're fine. Uh, we'll just keep it like this because I don't want to crash it again. But anyways, uh, so this is the long one. This is the connector one. And this over here is the subgrid one. Uh, what we have is obviously a normal battery. And then we have a subgrid battery, which is on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 rotors. So it's majorly subgridded. And with this, we'll be able to test if subgrids matter when it comes to the, uh, the transfer. Um, and then we have one more test that we'll do after this, but I will reserve that to, uh, well, to after this because I can't do it here. And that's going to be the heat test. Um, I'm pretty sure heat is also a factor when it comes to, uh, to the transfer efficiency in real life. So we'll see if heat's a factor in Space Engineers. Uh, since it is a mechanic, we're actually currently warm. You can see in the bottom right corner, uh, or actually the bottom center right kind of. You can see that this planet is warm, but if we went to the center, it would be an inferno. And if we went to space, it would be freezing. So we can also test those. But anyways, let's put these to the test and see how they stack up against our normal results. So battery A and B, let's toggle on. We've already set them to their appropriate uh, discharge and recharge. Same for these, toggle on and toggle on. And same for this one right here, uh, toggle these both on. Now uh, with this one right here, the rotors are turned off. So, um, so they're not costing any power. And with this one right here, I'm pretty sure uh, connectors, yeah, wait. Oh, it, it actually has a connected time. I, I actually never knew that. But uh, as of the latest update, connectors don't use any power. They connect without power. So uh, we can test this without them using up the power. Let's wait about four minutes and, uh, and hopefully this stuff will be recharged. Four minutes later. Yes, they're starting to be done. All right, let's check them out. Uh, one is done, two is done, and three is done. Let's go with the distance test first. So when it comes to the distance test, we have 1.62 megawatt hours, which is 1,620 uh, kilowatt hours. The exact same thing we saw in the other one. Um, so that's, I guess, good. Uh, I mean, that means distance doesn't matter. As long as it's on the same grid, it'll have the same, um, the same inefficiency, I guess. The 20% of your power will be lost. Moving on to the connector one, let's see about this one. So we have, oh, wrong battery. We have 1.62, okay, so connectors don't matter. As long as they're connected together, it will also have that 20% inefficiency. And let's finally check the massively subgridded one. And that one is 1.62, so subgrids don't matter. It's just a straight 20% on your, uh, on your power. Let's try the heat. So uh, we're in warm right now. We'll go to the center of the earth first so we can test the inferno, and then we'll go to space and test the cold. All right, welcome to the center of the Earth. It is an inferno, as you can see in the bottom center right side. Um, it is the center of the Earth as well, as you can see with spectator cam. We are like straight in the middle of the center of the Earth here. Uh, and we're going to put this to the test. So we have battery A, battery B, same setup as before. Both have the same amount of power, I'm pretty sure. Uh, 900 and 900. And we're going to see if inferno affects anything. Let's put it to the test. And in fact, while we're doing the Inferno test, because I don't want to just sit around waiting four minutes, let's go to space and do the other test as well. So we'll just go out here relatively somewhere. I don't really want to be in the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, let me just make sure I'm not. Okay, yeah, we're not. Uh, and let's do our freezing test, because you can see in the bottom right that we have a freeze going on. So pretty simple for this one as well. Same test. Boom. Boom. And then make sure to uh, set one to recharge and one to discharge. All right, this one has finally finished. Battery A is depleted. What about battery B? 1.62. I wasn't really expecting much different, but like that's the same thing we've been seeing everywhere. Uh, it'd be kind of cool if like colder temperatures offered a more efficient uh, power flow and maybe hotter temperatures had a, had a more uh, wasteful power flow or something like that. But um, 
I, I guess everything is the same. It's always going to be that 20% anywhere you go. Let's go and try the Inferno. Although I highly doubt the Inferno is going to be any different at this point. Uh, here's the Inferno. Let's see if the Inferno is different. By the way, the gravity in the Inferno, if you, uh, if you're looking for another Space Busters episode, there's actually one where we go to the center of the Earth and we mess with the gravity a little bit. But uh, yeah, the gravity is like uh, much less at the center of the Earth because there's much less Earth pulling you down. Uh, so that's always interesting. Um, but let's check this out. Battery number B, or battery letter B, uh, 1.62 as well. So yeah, heat definitely does not affect anything. Um, it's always going to be that 1.62 and it's always going to be that 20%. Okay, real quick, I actually have two more tests that I want to do, and these are multiple tests. So we have uh, one large battery going into six small batteries, and we also have nine mini batteries going into one small battery. And this will allow us to test whether uh, multiple going into one or one going into multiple have the same um, loss percentage as just one to one. So let's put these to the test and see how they fare. All right, the small ones are done, and let's check battery B. It gives us a store power of 318, and what we expected was actually 322.5 with all those miniature batteries. Um, and that gives us a loss percentage of exactly 20%. So it doesn't matter if you're going from 9 to 1, it's still the same percentage uh, as 1 to 1. Let's, uh, we, I mean, this we still have to wait a little bit for this one, but it's almost there. All right, this one's finally done. Let's check them out. B1, 420. B2, 420. B3, 420. B4, 420. 420. And 420. All of them have 420. And guess what? That gives us a loss percentage of exactly 20%. So it doesn't matter if you're going from many to one or one to many. You still have that same loss percentage. Let's real quick take a look at the uh, at, at the results. So here we are with the results. Uh, we have our distance uh, large to large. We got a loss of 20%. Don't mind all these divide by zeros. Uh, these were things I, that, that I didn't measure, like the transfer time. Um, but the connector one, we have a 20%. Subgrid, 20%. The warm freezing and infernos, all 20%. Large to six small, or nine to mini, nine mini to small, 20% and 20%. Let's check out the other tests as well. Uh, these are all the, the standard tests that we did at the start. You can see all of these are roughly 20% with a little bit of of, uh, of margin for error right there. So I think we can be sure that we're uh, we're correct when we say that pretty much any situation, battery to battery, is going to be a 20% loss on your, uh, on your power. And that is where we're gonna have to leave things with our <laughs> troubling knowledge that now our batteries are not as efficient as they used to be. Well, I guess they were never that efficient in the uh, in the first place this, this was always there just without me knowing i was in blissful ignorance thinking my batteries were more powerful than they than they actually are but anyways if you guys like this episode or maybe learned something please hit the like button put your comments and your suggestions down below in the comments section consider subscribing if you want to join the discord there's a link down in the description if you'd like to uh, become a patron perhaps there's a link down in the description um if you need anything else it's probably in the description uh if it's not just leave a comment but anyways i'll see you guys in the next episode of space busters